Hi, my name's Tommy and I work at Velocity Tuning. Today's video is for you guys that are using MHD. Now, this video is targeted at F90s today, but if you've got a 140i or an M3 or an M4 or even an F10 M5, what I'm gonna show you in this video is applicable to you as well. Our MHD packages suit lots of different people. So you may have actually came in-house and you've had multiple maps off of us as such, like a 99 Ron map and an ethanol map. You may not want to have to deal with my ugly face and you're having your car tuned remotely by us where you bought an MHD package and a custom map but you're not too sure on how to use it. Or you may have had your car tuned in-house and you decided that you want to make some changes so you've added this package on top. So what are you actually going to need to flash the car? Firstly, you're going to need a wireless flash adapter. We sell these MHD ones online and you can use this with MHD, boot mod, XHP, Bimmer link, Bimmer code. These work with tons and tons of different applications and also they work on different generations of BMW. So it's like three adapters in one. You've got KDKN, you've got ENET, and you've got another type of communication. So it doesn't matter what gear car you've got, you can connect in with this adapter. Secondly, you're going to need something to connect to the adapter. So you can either use your mobile phone or something like a tablet. Okay, let's go over how to begin this process. So we get our adapter and then near where the bonnet releases, we have an OBD port. So we plug that in there, we then have our ignition button, we press that three times, pretty fast, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the speedo, and you can see diagnostics mode, may have just missed that, but diagnostics mode is active, is the uh, bit we're looking for. I'll just do that again just to make sure you see it. Ignition goes on. Diagnostics mode active. That's what we're looking for. Now, if you're going to be flashing this with your mobile phone, then chances are you have connected uh, Apple CarPlay on it. So, as you can see, I've got it turned off here, and that's something you're going to need to do as well. If you leave CarPlay turned on and it's connected to the device that you're using, you could be midway through your flash and it may decide that it wants to use CarPlay instead, in which case the right is going to fail to the ECU. This is also true if you're at home and you have a hotspot nearby, like your router for example. Just go into the settings and make sure the auto join is turned off so that it doesn't jump over to a different Wi-Fi connection whilst you're mid-flash. When it comes to a battery stabiliser, you just need to reach down here, give that a double pull, Come around to the front of the car, flick up the bonnet, and if you're wondering why this car's so tall, it's just because it's on a dyno, I'm not a midget. And if you look here, here is your live point, and then for your earth, you can either go on one of these, or you can jump up onto this tab here, and that's going to give you a good battery support, so while you're flashing, you don't end up running out of battery. MHD adapter plugged in, ignition on. Find any local routers that you're connected to, i.e. your home one, and make sure the auto join is toggled off as I've just shown you. Then click onto the MHD adapter. Once that comes up, if you scroll down, you're gonna see uh, configure IP. It's set to automatic, and underneath you've got the IP address and the subnet. Change it from automatic to manual, and then that IP address and subnet you just see, enter those in again, leaving the router blank. That's gonna allow you to connect to the MHD app and the internet at the same time. Once you've got this done, we're now ready to go on to the MHD app. One of the things you can do with the MHD app is check to make sure that the car is flashable via the OBD port. So that's what we've just done here. As you can see, this one is possible. You then click to my licenses. The activation code that I've sent across to you can be entered in here and that's going to unlock your license so that you're able to flash the car. Next, read out the error codes. Now, this information is not just about error codes. It actually contains the information I need to find your stock file to create a remap for your car. Once all that's done, you'll see here 
that you've got configure flash options once the file sent across. Here you're going to find your speed limiter, your VMAX, your burbles, etc. etc. You can turn off your decat, your OPF, etc. All from that option there. Now, this I've turned up uh, to twice the speed, so you're going to see it's flashing extremely fast. But this is an unlocked ECU and it is fast anyway. But at the moment, we're seeing everything at twice the speed. So it's flash DME1 or bank 1. And now it's going to move over to bank two. It's a pretty fast process, to be honest, especially once the unlock's been done. So we can normally do this in like a minute or two. If I'm doing ethanol, uh, the amount of time it get, takes me to put the ethanol in the tank is longer than what it takes for the flash to actually be successful. While you're doing this, you can see a load of errors coming up. And as you can see there, it clears them off once it's done. So we're currently flashing the car. As you can see here, we can get the light off of it. We're halfway through the flash already. That's how fast this thing is. And if you look here, we get a ton of errors coming up when we flash. So when you're flashing the car, it loses connection with the engine ECU. So don't worry. It's very normal to have all the errors coming up because the car hasn't a clue what's going on. When it gets to the end of the flash, it clears all the errors automatically. So here we are on the MHD app. And you can see we're now starting on ECU2. For you guys that don't know, we have an ECU for the left and right side of the engine. And as you can see, the second side's done now. It reboots the ECU. It writes in the coding. For you guys that are clued up, you know that's a CAFT file. And then after this bit, it's going to clear all the errors out as well. So real easy simple process and as you see there all the errors that just came up is clear wait 30 seconds and then you can clear it off so your car's flashed and we want to get a data log go over to the data logging section and as you can see here you've got some options that you can set up now all the options that are pre-selected in terms of what you're logging is perfect for me already you don't need to change that unless there's something additional that i want to ask for when it comes to the gauges that you're seeing on the live screen you can set up how many you can see so i like to have six on the screen at the time but you can have more than that as we can see at the moment, this is six gauges of all exactly the same thing. Not very useful. You could now set this up to show you your engine oil or your, your coolant or your intake temperatures or your fueling corrections or what your boost is or whatever's interesting for you. But don't worry, this is just for you, not for me. When you're recording the log, everything that was seen on the last screen is sent to me regardless of whatever you're looking at here. Also, I recommend using the automatic logging feature. So as you go 100%, it automatically records the log. Otherwise, you may do a log with six, seven seconds of valuable information, but the log could be like three minutes long. That happens quite a lot, and automatic logging gets rid of that annoyance of, of basically invalid, unusable data. To break down the process, you need to buy your MHD license, create an MHD account, Plug in the adapter, make the changes in the settings that I showed you guys. Then you can activate your license, read out the codes, because that's going to show us what software that you're on. And once you've got those bits, we can prepare your file for you. Once your file's been prepared, you can then load that up onto your device, set the configuration how you want, and begin to flash. Remember, for that first flash, most importantly, use a battery stabilizer. Always keep the key present in the vehicle. Make sure you tap the ignition button three times if it's one of the new F-Series or a G-Series car. Make sure that you're not going to automatically connect onto any local Wi-Fi devices and turn your car play off. If you follow all those steps, you should have a nice, easy process. Shouldn't have any problems. I'm flashing maps all the time with this. I might be switching over to ethanol maps or I might be doing development maps. It's very, very simple, very, very easy. When it comes to the logging side of things, we want a third and fourth gear pull. You want to make sure that you've got full traction and you want to do it in a, a safe manner. So don't be going out onto the roads when it's raining and taking risks and, and ruining somebody's Christmas. Make sure that you always log and keep things in a safe environment. Also, 
We only really need two logs from you guys. So if you're sending over eight, nine, ten logs and it's all got the same information on it, it's actually going to make it harder for us because we're going to be looking through all the small logs. So just send us two good, clean logs and that's really going to help. Some of you guys will be watching this video and you haven't actually purchased one of our remote tuning packages off of us. You're trying to make the decision. Can Tommy really tune my car properly remotely to what he could on the dyno? Am I better off going somewhere local and getting a dyno tune? I'm really, not really too sure about this remote stuff. How can he know how the car's running if he's not even with it? Well, that's where data logging comes in. When we've got a car on a dyno, the dyno numbers are only a small portion, portion of what we're looking at. We're looking at boost request, actual boost, wastegate position, intake temperatures, charge temperatures, calculated exhaust temperatures, how much ignition's being pulled, what is the throttle doing, what is the requested torque, what is the actual torque, and many, many more things like short-term and long-term fuel trims. I could go on and on and on. All of that is recorded by the car. All of that can be recorded by things like Bootwood 3 and MHD. So when it comes to doing your tune remotely, we've got all the information in the world. We can see lots and lots that's going on with a car. If your car's making low power, potentially it's not boosting correctly or something similar to that, we're going to see that in the log. We're going to see, hang on a second, this car's putting a lot of time in, or hang on, he's running out of fuel, or we're asking for a certain amount of boosting with five PSI off a target. What's going on here? We will be able to see all of that. The cars that we're mapping inside the workshop and the cars that we're doing remotely because maybe they're in another part of the world or they just don't want to have to put up with me are all producing similar times. The guys that are coming into the workshop are not faster than the guys that are having something like one of our remote tuning packages. Otherwise, we wouldn't be offering it. We really enjoyed doing the cars remotely and at first even I was dubious of it because I didn't realise just how in-depth the data logging abilities of some of these platforms are. So a few guys that are on the fence, I can guarantee you that the level of service that we offer remotely is on par with what happens if you come in-house.